Hello there guys, on this video I'm going to be talking about sniper bot protection and blacklisting. This is the way that I do it, it's pretty unique. Uh, there are very specific reasons that I do it this way. The bots are getting quite sophisticated. If you have a normal blacklist function, they can see that you're using it and they'll just sell tokens using a lot of gas and they'll front run your blacklist. So there's no use just having a blacklist function. Uh, so I use a system that actually traps them. It's almost like a honeypot, so that if they buy, they cannot sell. Uh, until I either check their wallet and give them permission to sell or I check their wallet and blacklist them and then all they can do is send tokens back to me. So I'm going to explain how that works in code. So if I was doing a custom contract for you and you're doing a fair launch, uh, you're going to need bot protection. This is the way I do it. If you have a contract through my token factory, at the moment, it doesn't work exactly like this. There's a couple of little extra steps in there, uh, but this is like the refined version. I will be updating the factories very soon. By the time you watch this video, they'll probably be updated. So this is the way that I do it, and this is the code that I use. If you are a developer, then I would recommend that you switch over to doing something like this as well. If you're thinking about launching a token and you're doing a fair launch, I recommend that you either use my factory or come to me because this works. I've done this on quite a lot of contracts and bots just don't touch it because they can see that they genuinely will get trapped. Now, before I get started, I've got to say that blacklisting people, it's not right, it's not fair. Using bots is not right and not fair as well, but it's not illegal. But you trapping their money probably is. So you're on really sketchy ground here. So if you're going to blacklist somebody, you've got to refund them. If you're planning on using blacklisting functions, you've got to say inside your website and on your project and all of that stuff that you are going to use them and in what conditions that you would use them. So let's get started. Right, there's a couple of things we need to track, which we're doing with this set of things just here. So we're tracking the launch time of the token, uh, which is when you open trade. Uh, there's also something called an early buy time, which I'll talk about in a bit. We've got a, a period of time called launch mode, which happens when we very first open trade, and it lasts for up to an hour, but we can end it early. And we've got blacklist possible, which is a Boolean which can be true or false. And as you've probably guessed, if it's true, you have the ability to blacklist people. If it's false, you do not. So these are the functions that you would be accessing. So the first one, bot protection, this is where we set the early buy timer as a number of seconds. Now, this has to be 10 seconds or less. And this is a period of time from when you open trade on your contract. So it's a little window. If we put 10 seconds, it's going to be the first 10 seconds of your contract uh, opening trade. Uh, we'll talk about what happens in that window as we move down through the code. Uh, we've also got this function, which is um, blacklist bots. So this is the ability to take a wallet address, uh, pop it in here and put this as true or false. If you put it as true, that person is going to be blacklisted and they will not be able to sell, buy or move tokens. However, they can send tokens back to your wallet. If you put it as false, then a previously blacklisted wallet will be released from that restriction and they'll be like any other wallet. This little bit here, this if statement, this means that you can only set it to true if the Boolean blacklist possible is also true. So there is a restriction in this, that Boolean blacklist possible will get changed to false and that will either happen manually by you doing it or it will happen automatically after one hour has elapsed. Uh, this is the ability for you to end that, um, that ability. The ability for you to end the ability. <laughs> right, this, this is ending the launch mode. If you do this, it just turns launch mode to false and it turns the blacklist possible boolean to false, which means this function now can only be used to remove blacklist. It can't be used to add blacklist. So those are the functions. We'll now go and have a look at, let's do fine on this. Um, we'll now go and have a look at where they are in the code and what they do. Uh, so this is where they are. So we're inside the transfer function. And the first thing we're checking is whether or not launch mode is active. So when you open trade, launch mode is active. So that means we're gonna be running this block of code here. The first thing it does is it checks how much time has gone by 
since you opened trade. And if one hour has elapsed, it's going to end launch mode. It's going to set blacklist possible to false, which stops you from being able to blacklist anybody. Uh, and then we just carry on. It will skip this block of code and they'll carry on with the transaction as normal. If this is not satisfied, it goes into this block of code. So that means an hour has not passed. And there's a couple of things that are happening here. The first statement, this require statement, is saying if a wallet has already been tagged as an early buyer, then that person cannot sell. So this is preventing a person from selling if they've already been tagged as an early buyer during launch mode. So that's the way that we stop the people from buying. I mean, some of these people will be bots for sure. Some of them will be normal people, but you've got to look at their wallet and decide one way or another. Uh, the next thing that happens, this bit of code here, this first bit, is checking if we are still within that time window, um, which can be a maximum of 10 seconds. So whatever you set as the early buy timer, it adds that onto the launch time. And if the time now is less than that time, then we know we're still in that little window right at the beginning. And anyone who tries to buy in that window is tagged as an early buyer. Now being tagged as an early buyer is not blacklisting someone, but it is preventing them from selling their tokens during launch mode. So as we said on this little bit just here, after an hour, launch mode will end, it will skip all this, and whether you're tagged as an early buyer or not will make no difference at all. It's not gonna affect any other part of the code. Um, once launch mode has ended, if you've already blacklisted a person, then that person continues to be blacklisted. If you've put an early buy timer uh, tag on a person, it really doesn't make any difference. So the very next bit of code just here is checking if a person is blacklisted or not. If they are blacklisted, they can't buy or sell tokens or move tokens, but they can, uh, which is what this bit is here, they can send them to the owner. So, you know, they could come in your Telegram group and say, hey, I can't sell my tokens. And you can check their wallet and say, oh yeah, I blacklisted you, you used a bot. And then you can say, look, if you send your tokens back to me, I'll give you your money back. So you could do that if you wanted to. I would recommend that you do give people their money back because bots are not illegal, but you're being well dodgy if you're keeping their money. But as I said right at the beginning, make sure you say on your website, on your project information, in your Telegram group, we have got bot protection. If you do use a bot, you're gonna get blacklisted. Now, if someone comes into your group and they say, hey, I can't sell tokens, and you look at it and they're blacklisted, look at the transaction, get someone who really knows what they're doing to look at the transaction. And if they didn't use a bot, then use that blacklist function to remove the blacklist status from their wallet. So you just set uh, their wallet address and put it as false. You can do that at any time on your contract, as long as your contract is not renounced. Uh, so yeah, make sure that you don't blacklist people that have just got in quickly. If someone buys in the first second, that can just be normal. It can just be a person that's bought completely manually, no bots or anything. But if there's someone buying on loads of wallets over and over and over again in the first second of launch, you know, using inflated gas, that's very suspicious. And it's very detrimental to your token, your price, your holders, your project. So that's the sort of thing that this is there for. So there we go. That is the way that I do blacklisting. Uh, unfortunately, places like Dex Tools will put a big red flag on your token saying has blacklisting capabilities even after they have been um, removed. So you can no longer blacklist people, but it will flag on their site saying that you can, uh, which is not correct. Uh, there's a couple of people from my community that are trying to talk to the people that provide that information for places like Dex Tools to say to them, hey, look at the code. You can see here that the blacklisting can no longer be done and hope they update their code and make it more sophisticated so that it stops reporting things that simply aren't true about contracts. But you have to bear in mind that the people that are doing these things are very busy. Most of them are just volunteers and it's easier for them to just say there's a blacklist function there than to look into the details of the blacklist function and realize it can't be used and then report it as it actually is. Because to be honest, not many tokens do this, but there's a lot of tokens that are just scams out there. So it's better to be over cautious in those situations. But unfortunately, it means that when we've got decent code that's doing what it's meant to do to protect people, sometimes it can be um, it can backfire on us. So there we go. That's it. That's the way that my uh, my bot protection, sniper bot protection, and blacklisting works. You only really need this if you're doing a fair launch. 
Um, you don't need it if you're doing a pre-sale because obviously you're going to have people that have bought tokens on the pre-sale that can sell. So when you actually go for a public launch, if a bot was to buy tokens, they can lose money. So it's very unusual for a bot to buy tokens on a public launch when there's already people that have bought tokens on a pre-launch and they could dump the price. The bots only buy when there's pretty much a guarantee of making a profit. Uh, so on a fair launch, when you're adding your own liquidity on PancakeSwap and you're opening trade and everyone gets, you know, equal dibs, that's the situation where you need these kind of functions. If you have a lot of hype, uh, massive community of people all waiting and stuff like that, that's when you're at the greatest risk. What I would say to you, if you have a Telegram group and you've got hype going on about a token, the people that are asking questions before launch, like what's the contract address, can we look at the code, uh, all of that kind of stuff, they're normally the people that are sitting there with the bots. So what they want to do is they want to have a look at your code to make sure that their bot uh, won't be trapped. They want to get your contract address to point their bot at your code and they're in your Telegram group asking loads of questions to get that. So I would say that if you are launching a token, don't let anyone know the contract address or see the code until you're ready to actually open trade. Then say you're going to open trade, you're going to reveal the contract address in the group uh, so everyone sees it at the same time, as opposed to giving the contract address first. So there are people that are already there sitting trying to buy. It is a bit of a frenzy at the beginning and you definitely don't want to give the bot users your contract address before you launch. Um, I mean, a lot of people put it on their websites and stuff, but there's no need. You can just put on your website, will be revealed at launch. And then at the moment of launch, put it. And you, you could put on your website, join our Telegram group, contract address will be revealed at moment of launch. Open trade, copy the contract address, paste it into your Telegram group, and then everyone can just go for it. And then you're not going to be worried about bots. That's all from me, guys. Take care. If you do want a contract, uh, get yourself over to tokensbygen.com um, or come and see me in uh, Telegram and I can do a custom contract for you. I've got some really fantastic updates coming on Tokens by Gen. We are going to be doing a rewards token. Uh, that's going to be rewarding Gen, uh, our native token, and that's going to be free. Uh, so as people uh, start using that contract, it's going to help to pump our chart. You can get more details about this in our Telegram group, and I'll be updating the website with lots more information about this very, very soon. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.